Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, because I usually use my headset, I'm not using the headset anymore. It's a Bluetooth configuration issue between Windows and Mac and parallel desktop. They don't communicate very well with that. And so what I've realized is that we're going to do it differently from now on. You hears me? All right. I know I didn't say you heard me, but you hears me? Ladies and gentlemen, many of you and the little squeaking you hear in the background is the dogs are asleep. And what happens is while they are asleep, they're having a conversation with somebody. I don't know. It's just that's what they've been doing ever since. They came on inside this house. Get they just like they, they sound like little birds or something, chirping. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's see if we can go ahead and explain this in the nuttiest of nutshells of all nutshells possible. Here's the thing. In 1933, the United States went bankrupt. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's what Mr. Trafficking told everybody. That Congress was overseeing as receivers or conservators of the bankruptcy, as trustees of the bankruptcy, the greatest bankruptcy in the nation and the world's history. Ladies and gentlemen, a banking emergency is a bankruptcy. That's why you need to have all of your creditors put in the freezer to where they can't move. Okay, they're frozen in place. That's called a banking emergency, i.e. bankruptcy. I showed you yesterday what the congressional record, how the Trading with the Enemy Act Amendment of 19... 39, I mean 33, excuse me, March 9, 1933. And then I showed you all the Federal Reserve Act Amendment of March 9, 1933. And Presidential Proclamation 2039 in the Congressional Record. Bringing all four of those items together. It says right in there that that's the New Deal. I did show you on video yesterday. Don't make me have to show you again. Alright, I ain't got time to be sitting up here wasting my time. So the New Deal is still available for access. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care if you don't want to be a part of the New Deal, if your mama doesn't want to be a part of the New Deal, if your granddaddy don't want to be a part of the New Deal. I don't care. This ain't got nothing to do with nothing, but we're going to use it to our ability, the best of our ability. Who is sitting up here making all that noise? Y'all cut that noise out around me. Sorry, I, they they just like children, okay? They just the silent, not not heard, silent and not heard. Anyway, uh, they're still puppies. They are just now getting to the point where they can walk, but they're not really steady in their feet. It's like they have this temperament, just in reverse. You know what I'm saying, Vern? All right. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, because it's part of the New Deal. You just want to use that paragraph. We don't care about any of the other provisions of the New Deal. Why? Because it says when using this paragraph, when using this section, when using this, we just reuse it. It's all right if you want to become a user. Oh, my mama was a user. Yeah, she used to put on her useries and go about town and be diddling and daddling. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's all you're doing is you're just using part of the act. But because you have those four items, the Presidential Proclamation, the Trading with the Enemy Act, the Congressional Record, and the Federal Reserve Act as amended, March 1933, that's your preponderance of evidence to the contrary. It's not prima facie anymore. It's actual law. I'm sorry, did you understand what I just said? When you put all four of those together, forget what the reality is. Let's go by what they say the reality is. They say when you put that junk together, that's the law. So let's use the law to our advantage. You feel me? Ladies and gentlemen, many of you are not understanding what you need to do. So this is what I'm going to suggest that you do. 
Document that you've tendered payment if you've already tendered payment initially by doing a promissory note. Document that that promissory note was a security. Ladies and gentlemen, then go ahead and forgive the debt. Now hold on now, hold on, just to let y'all know, that's what Legion is doing for people. But Legion is going one step further. Legion is providing everything that the IRS says in IRS topic 453 that needs to be done and under regulation number 1.66. Okay? That's what Ameri Legion is doing. Ameri Legion is not just some company saying, give me some money so we can just file paper. No, Ameri Legion is taking care of all of that. Now, here's the thing about Ameri Legion. They cannot do the 1099 A's and C's for people. They're going to have to leave it up to the person to do. Why? Well, because if we set up an account in your name, pay attention. If we set up an account in your name, pay attention. Hold on. If we set up an account in your name, then that's your account. That means you have to put in your credit card information. Now, I'll be talking with the group tonight. We have a meeting in less than 20 minutes, 15 minutes to be exact. And I'll be talking with them. I believe we might still be able to do the 1099-8s, 1099-Cs for our clients for giving the debt. That's all you have to do. Look, ladies and gentlemen, everybody's trying to figure out how to put money in their pocket. Okay, I talked to one guy. He's a truck driver. He asked for a consult. He's going to get a consult because we're going to talk about all the things. He, he was thinking about doing some other things, and I had to ask him, why do you want to do that? That don't make any sense. And he's like, you know, it doesn't make any sense. I just thought, I said, that's the problem. You're not supposed to be thoughting. And so now he's going to do it a different way. Why? Because I gave him several suggestions that he realized and agreed that, man, that, that ought to work even better. Exactly. See, that's what the consults are for. People contact me. And I sit up there and give them several options, not just one or two. Here's my problem. I can give you all of the information you need during a consult. I give you all the documentation. I can point you to every place you need to go to get the information you need. Here's the problem. Guess what? Many of you won't do it. Shame on y'all, shame on y'all, shame on y'all. Now, I had a young lady contact me, and I got to say this real quick. Contact me the other day, and she asked me to get in touch with her, and I did try contacting her and never got a call back. I, I was going to actually give her some information on Saturday. Called her on Saturday. Uh, uh, and I tried calling about six other people and they didn't answer. And so the person who did answer, that's who I left the information with. And I put the video up. That's the video that you guys heard. So she thinks I'm angry with her. I'm not angry with her. I just don't like for my time to be wasted. She says she's not wasting my time. Uh, nah, uh, uh, yes, you are. Because you got a decision from the court and you didn't bother to tell me what that decision was so I could tell you what to do next that's wasting my time. I don't like being bombarded with information, waiting until the, oh, well, I'll wait until I got everything, and then I'll just try to throw it all in your face. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you can't see huh? so much information. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Okay, so that was the biggest problem. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to this um, debt. Ladies and gentlemen, I had to explain to that gentleman that he files taxes, and he files more than $5,000 in taxes a year. That's why you do the 1099s. That's why you do the tax credits, ladies and gentlemen, so you can get all that back. All of you would be tax exempt if you just simply did your 1099Cs and followed the instructions to attach a 1099. It is simple. It is not complicated. You are the, pay attention, the lender creditor on each of these because you're the one forgiving the debt. But remember, there has to be a debt, so you have to document a debt. Hey, that's what Ameri Legion is there for. It's a third party documenting a debt for you. And it's being done to where they can't rebut it. That's what Ameri Legion is doing. And no, you guys will, you must understand, we don't reveal all of the steps with Ameri Legion because we know that people are going to try to duplicate the process and they're going to try to ruin it. And we can't have that. Okay, so just it's just that simple. Hey. I don't want to take up you all's time. I just want to tell you, if you did your forgiveness of debt, and all of you should be forgiving your neighbor. So if you literally started forgiving debt and doing it according to the way the statute says, that's what Ameri Legion is doing, then, ladies and gentlemen, you have the tax credits to offset everything. Look, SACOM, and SACOM is getting ready to do this. Remember, SACOM is a depository corporation. We're going to start allowing people to make deposits with our organization. Shh! I know, I know, ain't it? Yeah, anyway, that's what we're getting ready to do because that's what we've been doing. 
We've just been doing it within the organization. We had to establish ourselves first. We had to do the paperwork, and we're still working on some paperwork. Uh, a lot of people didn't know where SACOM going, couldn't figure things out. Many people, well, how come I haven't received this? Because you wasn't supposed to receive anything else. The moment you got your SAT pack back, that was the completion of the process, along with the UCC and the 1098, I mean the 98 series, or the 87 series, whatever series number we gave you, that was the completion of the process, ladies and gentlemen. The only thing you were waiting on is the tax credits. Everybody, well, I haven't heard nothing from y'all because you wasn't supposed to hear nothing from us. Okay, we're, we're, we're the securities whisperers. You ain't supposed to be hearing us. We're whispering. Lord have mercy. Stop eavesdropping on our conversations. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to get to that meeting, but I want to thank you because you've helped me realize how I can resolve one problem. And we'll keep you updated, okay? Oh, the puppies? I'm yelling right now because that's how tired I am. Hey, guess what? Uh, I have an RV on the property. Uh, this nice young lady who helped me out, uh, she asked if she could keep her RV on the property. So the RV is here, and somebody has come by and siphoned all the gas out of it. Can you imagine that, just siphoning the gas out of somebody's car? It's a good thing there wasn't a lot in there. I have some extra gas that I keep on the property and when it's time we'll make sure that they get filled up when it's time for them to leave but yes this is the games people play ladies and gentlemen if you haven't done it yet go get yourself a locking gas cap just trust me on the locking gas cap thing if you haven't done it already go and get yourself a locking gas cap you're going to need that. Yes, people can still get by the locking gas cap, but it's a whole lot more effort. So rather, especially with gas prices being what they are, they would rather go to another car that's more convenient than to stay at yours and have to jimmy and drill and all of that stuff. So go and get yourself a locking gas cap. You can get it at any one of the auto parts stores. Even at Walmart, they might have a locking gas cap for your model vehicle. Okay, the gas cap for your vehicle is not going to be too much different than about a hundred other thousand vehicles out there because it's just a gas cap. There's nothing special to it. Nothing special about it. You feel me? You heard me? All right, ladies and gentlemen, there we started it with you, what you heard me, and we're going to end it with what you heard me. All right, y'all take care. Y'all have a Coke and a smile and a good day and all that other stuff that you think you have not Y'all just go ahead and take it that way, and we'll speak to you again. Have a good day. Bye. I'm out of, I'm gone. I didn't, I didn't, bye.